Off feel. Left. What I want. Get back slow, my love. The way she rock it. I love the way she move it, move it, shake it. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We another Washington Commanders video, and in today's video, I'm coming on here with the video where we're going to be talking about Eugene, aka Ron Rivera, and how he does not want to get better. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video, but before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. We want to roll to 7,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Let's get straight into today's video. So as we know, the Washington Commanders are coming off of their turbo loss to the New York Giants, and following the New York Giants loss, Ron Rivera had a presser as he always does the Monday following each game and Ron Rivera basically said in his press conference that he does not want to get better and we're going to break it down step by step word by word because I'm right here about to expose Ron Rivera and, and, and he showed his true colors because it's clear as day that he's fine with being mediocre he's fine with being average all right, so we're going to pull up the post game or the um, Monday after uh, press conference that he always does with the media and the journalists, and we're going to break it down one by one because it, it was it was bad. It was bad. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this up so you guys can hear, and I'm going to pretty much break down everything and kind of expose Ron Rivera for his, for his true colors. So go ahead and take a listen. You know, we were in that game yesterday. We had every chance to win, and unfortunately, we didn't do it. And I understand our fans' frustration. Hell, I hear it too. Okay, and I respect them. We're trying to play the best football we can and at the same time grow a football team. You know, are you sure you're trying to play the best football you can when you don't make no adjustments in a 60 minute game? Are you sure you're trying to play the best football you can? I don't think so. I think you're fine with just being the way you are average. At the same time, grow a football team. You know, we're not going to go around cutting a bunch of people, trading for a whole bunch of people. Trying. So it's a trade deadline coming up, and you see other teams like Philadelphia trading for Kevin Byard, one of the best safeties in football, and you don't want to cut or trade players that's going to help you grow in a year where you need to prove to the new ownership that you can be the coach of this future? Really? Your team is 3-4 and four, where it feels like the season is over, but they're right in the middle of a potential playoff wild card chase, and you don't want to get better? Really? That don't make sense. Trying to hire a whole, we're not going to go around cutting a bunch of people, trading for a whole bunch of people, trying to hire a whole bunch of people. We're trying to develop a young football team to be a very good football team for the future. And first of all, first of all, first of all, future. Why is future in your vocabulary? You're not going to be here for the future. You're not going to be here to groom this team for the future. You had three years to groom this team. I, why are you still developing the team? It's year four. Year four, you should not be developed. The only person that you should be worrying about developing is Sam Howe. And Sam Howe has shown, even when he's under the rest every single time, every single play, he has no protection. That 23-year-old has shown much more maturity and much more growth than you did in four years here. Sam Howe, yes, he still technically has to develop because he's, he's his second year and his first year starting, but he's shown me that he can play at this level. You as a coach has shown me the game has passed you by. And every time people used to try to say Ron Rivera got curried by Cameron Newton, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it because I felt like a coach had a lot to do with a t with the players and the team's success. But Ron Rivera has shown me that what they said are true. Cameron Jermaine Newton carried him that year. So you're still trying to develop a team in year four? When in year four you're supposed to be competing for Super Bowls. But you're talking about development? Come on, dog. We're trying to hire a whole bunch of people. We're trying to develop a young football team to be a very good football team for the future. And that's what we're going to continue to work on. So that that's pretty much it, okay? That's pretty much it. What what he said as far as his press conference. That to me, I don't know how the, how that how that made y'all feel, but that rubbed me the wrong way, okay? Because you're not trying to get better in a season where yes, it seems like the season is over, right? Because um. We are losing to teams that we have no business losing. 
to but the season is still very much in the balance if you win because you can be in the middle of a playoff chase the nfc east or nfc is mediocre outside of the division leaders the nfc is mediocre everybody is right there three and four four and three whatever so i just wanted to play that because every time from now on listen to me ladies and gentlemen when i say this from now on this is how we are addressing ron river every time ron river opens his mouth this is the response i want to say eugene god damn it eugene Oh, what? Every time he opens his mouth now, I'm just like, Eugene, goddammit, Eugene. Why did you say that? Why are you acting like that? You do not know how to coach football now. It's clear. It's clear. I thank you, okay? I thank you for your off-the-field, you know, off-the-field changes, your 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 uh, culture building off-the-field, you know, as far as changing a toxic organization and, and trying to bring some light to it and some respect to it, but you're on the field, your construction of a roster is horrible. I can do better than that. I can do better than that. And why does it seem, why does it seem that the, us fans get it? We get it. We like, for an example, you see, you see Sam Howell's getting pressure. We're at home, like, why don't you just make this adjustment? Why don't you do this? But the people that get paid the big bucks, Ron Aver, Eric Bieniemy, Jack DeRio, they get paid the big bucks, but it seems so hard. Like, it never crosses their mind. But for us at home, some of us play football all our life, so we know it like that. Some of us never play football before, but we study the game, and we know it from a watching standpoint. And we're like, it's that simple. But instead, this this coaching staff wants to be inept of change and, and mediocre. So, I been done with Ron Rivera after that Bears game. But that really was just like, come on, bro. Come on. Like, you look at teams like Philadelphia. They lose one game. Lose one game and they're making changes. Bringing in Julio Jones, who's 34. I don't know how much he's going to be able to contribute to them, but at least they're making changes and making attempts to make better their roster. And then they trade for one of the best safeties in football, or used to be. I don't know if he still is, but I'm pretty sure he is. Kevin By. But you sit here and tell us we're not going to cut. We're not going to trade for guys. I mean, you're probably not going to cut nobody right now, but you can't trade to better your team? You're telling me that? You don't want to trade to better your, your team. Why? That that's because you're comfortable with mediocre, and that's 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 clear. That's clear because you are a quote unquote linebacker. Jake Jack the was a linebacker, but yet y'all don't want to upgrade the linebacker position. Year in and year out, David Mayo is still somehow finding his way on this team. I guarantee, if David Mayo was uh, elsewhere, he would never see the field unless it was for special teams. But for some reason in Washington, David Mayo is getting competent snaps. This is frustrating as a fan because your coach openly came out and just said that he's comfortable where we're at. If you're, co if we can be comfortable where we're at, you know, the only time you should be comfortable where you're at when you're 6-1 and one like Philadelphia. And they're not even comfortable. The time you can be comfortable is if you're 5-2 and two like Detroit or 6-1 and one like Kansas City. When you're at the top of your division, that's where you can be comfortable where you're at and compete for something. Like what well, I expected us to be. I expected us to be five and two, six and one. And you can't tell me that we don't have the talent to be. We have the talent to be up there with those guys. But what pissed me off even more was the fact that you look at these standings in the NFC, and Washington is right in the mix of one of these wild card spots. And your coach just openly said, with the trade deadline approaching, that he's not going to get better. He's not going to try to bring in no offensive line help. He's not going to try to shuffle around the offensive line because Kolu can play right tackle better than Andrew Wiley. I'll tell you that now. You're telling me you're not going to try to come out and find a, a, a different back that can give you some change of pace. You're telling me you're not going to go out and try to look for a potential slot guy uh, on, on defense. Tell me you're not going to try to look for no linebacker that could. I guarantee you, any linebacker out there or that you could potentially trade for is better than better than better than uh David Mayo. You're telling me you don't want to try to give Jabril Cox a chance to want an active roster? That's why I always I get happy when we sign guys like Jabril Cox to the practice squad, but I don't know why. Because we never use them. We're never going to use them. But we're three and four, okay? You look at that. We're three and four, right? 
the the Minnesota Vikings are three and four. The 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 Bucks and the uh, Falcons are four and three and three and three, and the Saints are three and four, right? The Rams are three and four, and the Seahawks are four and two. We're right in the middle of a wild card spot. Now I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to make the playoffs or that we're going yeah we're going to make the playoffs and make the wild card because we very well are probably going to miss it. But the fact that you're in the middle of it and it's week eight and you feel me like you have an opportunity to potentially turn your season around and you just openly said you don't want to get better that that pissed me off and and, and eugene is, is is past his time man and um i can't i just can't wait to fire him i mean i would love to fire him right now but the only reason why i wanted to fire him was to give eric benemy a chance to be the head coach but i don't even want to do that anymore because he's shown me that he doesn't get it either as everyone is saying we're the most let down and most disappointed in Eric Benemy's performance. He was supposed to be the guy that gave us hope. Let's keep it a buck. Let's be real. We didn't really have faith in Ron Rivera or Jack DeRue because we already knew what they were. We had faith. We were so hyped about what offensive coordinator Eric Benemy and Sam Howell could bring. Sam Howell's showing up trying his best. But EB is, he's just mediocre and he's trash. He he was a product of the system. Can we just, can we just say that? Now, he can turn it around here. I probably still don't want to the ownership probably seen enough from him too so they probably don't want him back but he was a product of the system let's keep it a buck everything everybody was saying about eric Benemy, okay the nfl have passed up on him because they they thought it was andy reed that called the place he had nothing to do with it it seemed like they were true okay because he he clearly doesn't get it doesn't get it right now washington is if the playoffs was to, you know, start the race today, Washington will be sitting in the 10th spot. 10th spot, right? Because we're 3-4. and four. That is three spots behind the number 7 seed where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are right now at 3-3. Three and three. Now, I know y'all probably won. It's still super early to be looking at playoff spots. But I'm a competitor. I don't want to ever throw in the towel until it's really time to throw in the towel, okay? So... We're three, we're, 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 they're three and three, we're three and four. We're three spots out of seven place, and your coach just came out and said that he does not want to get better. How, how feared are you of the Rams, who you play later this season? I think we could take the Rams, but we're probably going to lose that game because we play down to, you know, we play down to our competition, even though the Rams aren't bad, but you feel me? We, we play down to them, but we will go on a, we will, we will go on a road and, 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 uh, play up the competition of Philly, who's six and one. Doesn't make sense, right? You got Dallas twice. There's still a lot of season left if we had a competent coaching staff that actually never gave up and actually tried and actually cared. But the season is going to be over because you don't have a coaching staff that cares enough to continue to try to fix this thing. As much as BS that they feed us and try to say, yeah, we're going to try to develop this team and try to turn this thing around. You're not really trying. You really don't care. You look at the Vikings. The Vikings are now 3-4 and four after they started off their season badly and fans were ready to tank for them but you see they're turning it around because they have a coaching staff that actually is trying to turn it around they know that they have talent on that team and they should be winning games no us we have talent on our team but we still want to play like we're stuck in 2019 with no talent this pisses me off man and every time I hear Ron Rivera open his mouth and hear him say something from now on all we're going to do is say this no. Eugene, goddammit! Eugene! Eugene, goddammit, Eugene! Oh, every time. Every time Ron Ver opened his mouth, now that's all we gonna play. So, with that being said, I wanted to come on here and kind of expose Ron Rivera for his true colors. How do you guys feel about his press conference, though? You know what I'm saying? Do y'all feel the same way, like, really, Ron? Or am I am I over the edge on this one? Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below. As always, it's me and boy Wine. Gotti, like, comment, subscribe. Hail to the Washington Commanders. Want to roll to 7,000 subscribers. Please help me get there as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Love each and every one of y'all. Y'all have a blessed one. Peace.